Hello, hello. I'm happy to have Jacob Suko join me today. Suko, Sukow, how Suko, you got it. Suko, Sukow. Like hey, it's been all over the place, quite frankly. I don't even know. Okay. Entirely, but okay. Suko works good. So I can say basically whatever I want. And, Pretty much, yeah. Uh, all right. Well, that makes it easy. Well, today we're with Jake. So thanks for coming with us, Jake. Yeah. Um, so Jacob is one of the founding members of the First Gen community. So uh, he and I have become good friends over the last few months. Really happy that he's part of the crew. And we're going to take a few minutes to just chit chat together to help you learn a little bit more about him, what he does, why he's good at it, how it can help you, and so on. So uh, the format for the show here is I'm going to ask you, give me your best elevator pitch. Pretend that you and I just met and I said, nice to meet you, Jake. What do you do for a living? What would you say in 60 seconds or less? Yeah, for sure. So my name is Jacob. Uh, I never in a company called Email Empire and we're an email marketing agency and education company, right? Where the whole goal is to teach online business owners how to be able to grow and monetize their audience in a way that's a hell of a lot more effective and on a platform that they own. Right. So typically we're working with online experts, you know, course creators, coaches, anything information or coaching based and helping them add another at least 50 to hundred thousand dollars a year in revenue to whatever they have going on already with the audience they own. That's cool. You did it in 30 seconds. Number one, good, good on you. Number two, I know now what you do, but then I really like that hook about like, if, if you're an online expert, we can add 50 to 100K in revenue just using email. I think that's an effective pitch because it's going to, I'm going to perk up and go, okay, tell me more. <laughs> oh, I think you're muted. I can't hear you all of a sudden. Just double mute. I got so scared with the loud ass motorcycle rolling past playing some sweet music that I wanted to make sure it didn't ruin your recording. And then I did it with the double mute. Um, but yeah, I think that's an effective pitch just because it um, it piques my interest when you go, oh, okay, so an extra 50 to 100K just through email. Sure. Like I presumably already use email. So what kind of secret sauce do you have that's going to make it so great? Um, so that's, that's good. And before you just answer that, let's go into this next section here because I think we're going to unpack this a little bit further. Uh, so here's, here's a question for you. Why do you think email marketing is where it's at? Like it, you seem to be all in on, on email. So why is that the case? Yeah, definitely. So social, right. It's where everybody builds their audience. This is where you get top level exposure to new people who don't know who the hell you are. Mm -hmm. That's great. But then when you continue to try and talk to people as if they don't know who you are for the entirety of the life cycle that they know you, what ends up happening is it becomes really damn hard to develop more intense relationships, right? And to guide them further down the funnel to where you can help them most, which is your offers. And so email bridges the gap, right? It's the second that I know who you are, Andrew. If I want to learn more about you, how you can help me and what specifically goes on in your world, social is not going to cut it. Also, platform you don't own. You got to deal with algorithms. You got to deal with ad costs, right? Rising things, changes left and right. And so what happens is then you're consistently taking your content which is going to be geared toward what's most helpful and impactful for the audience. And you're tweaking it to fit the platform, mm -hmm. not how it's going to be best delivered to everybody that's there on the back end. Right? So three things that it hits one, you own it Two, It's a much more natural and organic way to actually connect with folks. And three, this one blows most people away. One platform where 99% of people inside of the country own one. It's an email. And the number of people who check it every single day, at least once a day, about 88%. Right. They're already there. Everything they do, all their social accounts, all their online stuff, their iPhone accounts, all tied to an email, right? It's the glue of the internet and has been for the past 30 years. So anybody who tells you that it's, you know, fallen off, less popular, whatever else they may be, it's fine. You can listen to them, but everything that goes on in the background, it all runs through your email. Wow. Yeah, that's a that's pretty strong. I hadn't honestly thought of it that way. But like when I wake up in the morning, that's the first thing I do is I'm checking my email even before social. Um, the fact that there's no algorithms to deal with, like I hear complaints about LinkedIn algorithm daily lately. Uh, and then I think fundamentally the idea that you're using social to to become to get on someone's radar, right? That they become aware that you exist, mm -hmm. but you can't really put the type of content out there on social 
that goes a level deeper because you got two different goals here, awareness versus, you know, kind of building trust and, and showing them who you are. So it's kind of moving a little bit further down the funnel than email is. For sure. Yeah. Well, and it's also just like choosing to play in a place where you've got a hell of a lot more freedom. Mm -hmm. So it's like, only selling on social and trying to only use a social media platform would be like deciding to ride a bike with training wheels, even after you'd learned how to ride it without it. It's just holding you back, right? Keeping you from going anywhere near faster. It doesn't really make much of any sense. Might feel safer, might feel like it works. You know, you're not going to fall over or whatever the hell else goes on there. Yeah. I'll just limit it. Right. So you can kind of think of it of like social being like, I'm going to raise awareness that I exist. Yep. Email is I'm going to start adding value and, and convincing you that I can help you. Sure. And yeah. It's horizontal versus vertical, right? So like, if you look at a funnel, it's got, you know, two directions to make it mm -hmm. better. Let's say like just finding out about you is here and like purchasing from you a second time is like down here. Mm -hmm. um, social is amazing for growing horizontal, mm -hmm. widening out everything at the top. Right. So like new platforms, new people from on those platforms, new audiences, new people to collaborate, new channels. Sweet. It's getting wider. Right. But if it stays just that wide and doesn't tip down and we can't move them vertical, you're screwed. You're not going to make any money. It's going to be a hell of a lot more difficult than it has to be. And so like emails are guide vertical, right? Because you could speak to people at all kinds of different stages inside of your customer journey. And there will be, you'll have repeat customers you'll have lifelong ones you'll have people who've been on your list for a day you'll have somebody who came from someone else's audience to roll into you they sit at all at very different points along this so like email is the vertical line that connects just about everything else that you do you can push people to social you can push them to great content you can push them to a podcast you can push them to an offer you can push them to somebody else it's all vertical though mm. that's really interesting all right well then i think that that is a nice segue into this next question then Everything that you just said about email, does that apply to, is it just universal truth or is it really stronger for certain industries or niches than others? Yeah, hundred percent. So there's two things in marketing that are most important, right? For like having a successful path to sale and it's frequency, right? And mm -hmm. usually like consistency of whatever messaging it is that you have, right. the two right. biggest things. Um, I haven't found a niche yet where if you can capture somebody's email address and you can talk to them more often about their problems and how you can help them solve them, that you're not going to sell more, right? It's like, these are your favorite people. If they opt into a list and they say, Hey, listen, Andrew, I want to learn everything that I can about running a business as a first generation entrepreneur. Sweet. Check me out on LinkedIn. Awesome. Now I'm going to fight to find your content. They literally right. made a button so that I have to try and hit this button to maybe not miss your stuff. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm still going to deal with it in terms of all my notifications and everything else on the back end. Email is the most consistent way to be able to assuredly right, get in front of these people on a daily basis or a little bit less if you don't feel that way. I've worked with everything from people who run uh, accredited investments for real mm -hmm. estate. It's like literally they're selling twenty-five dollars to $125,000 minimum investments in something mm -hmm. it with email. Uh, I've had people who literally sell elevator fire stop insulation, roll through, same deal, kill it with email. And then also for a lot of folks to roll in here, consultants, coaches, course creators, e-commerce shops, little plant and flower shops, right? Uh, the coffee shop that I go to, I've been yelling at them to email me whenever they have new stuff, new coupons every single time, and they still won't do it because I would buy all of it and be in there twice as often as I already am. And that's a little bit ridiculous, but no yeah i mean there's no reason not to yeah yeah that's uh that's really really cool to think about um and man what a cool niche for you to have picked like that this is my thing email yeah, look, yeah. what i do i'm the email guy i like that um so what advice then would you have to give to your fellow first gen entrepreneurs because i i'm i'm gonna go out on a limb and guess that the vast majority of first gens are probably underutilizing email as a, sure. as a tool to grow their business. So what, what advice would you have to give for them? Yeah. So I mean, I email daily uh, and I underutilize email inside of my own business. Right. So like, there's never a case where that's not a factor. So there's a statement that always has held true for just about everybody that I've worked with. So I haven't been in one business where mailing more often doesn't net more sales. 
And so like my main MO, and this is what the whole brand around email empire is around on the education side is that no matter where you're at, no matter how early, how early on you are, how small your audience is, the best thing that you can do is start an email list as soon as humanly possible, because it does two things. So one, it takes everybody that is following you earlier on and makes them a hell of a lot more dedicated and interactive and engaged with your brand, which mm -hmm. is huge when you're small, because now you can take a smaller audience of let's say 500 people. But if you got 400 of them on your email list and you're mailing them two to three times a week, well, guess what? You've got 400 highly engaged subscribers where I know folks who've got 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 people on their list and they'd be happy to have that if not more. Right. And so it's all a game of like ratios. So it's mm -hmm. like what percentage of my audience is engaging with my top notch stuff on a regular basis and then seeing my offers. Right. And so right. the earlier you can start it off, the less of a hump that you have to get over with anything from a sales perspective. Right. Like I don't right. care how big, how small, whatever you have is, it's a pain in the ass in the beginning. It's so much easier though to build momentum from the get once you've already got a really good habit of understanding, hey, the best place you can be is on my list because then that means I can give you whatever it is that you need. I want. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, and I think that probably, um, another safe assumption is that a lot of people hesitate to get started because they let perfection get in the way of progress or they feel intimidated by it. And, you know, do you need to have a perfect newsletter ready to go before you send it at first? Sure. Yeah. No, never. All right. Like I'm a big, we've talked about this tons of times. Uh, 60%, right? Is like my goal. If I'm 60% happy with something, that means I'm better than being on the fence. And if that's as far as I can get it inside of time, like, let's go, just push it out. So like on the email side, the biggest thing that stops most people, honestly, is usually confidence. So I've got about like 436, I think, individual answers to the question of what's your number one email marketing struggle. And a good 60% of them stem from some variation or another of confidence for right. a couple of reasons, right? It's like, Nobody wants to talk to a brick wall. So it's like, it's embarrassing to talk to 20 people until mm -hmm. people start to reply and engage with your shit and you actually mm -hmm. get feedback. And it's mind blowingly approving in terms of what you need, especially right. early on. What's the wind in your sails immediately? Exactly. And then the same shtick right around, uh, like you mentioned, like perfection is like, oh, I suck at copywriting. Is this going to sell it? Is this going to do it? Whatever else it may be. The goal early on is just to get people on there and to not ignore them once they're there which is what most folks end up doing. Yeah, right? I kind of did that too a little bit. So <laughs> it happens. It happens. It well, happens like, to all of us. You know, the tough part is like people talk about list building and then they think like ads, social, I need this. I need the first thing that I teach people who come into my program is literally to send out a hundred DMs of, hey, I'm starting up a newsletter about X problem that I solve. Thought it was something you might be interested in. Can I count you in? Them saying yes, it's like, sweet, there's your first opt-in. You grab their email, you do it manually. I mm -hmm. guarantee there's not a person coming out who's actively selling something and trying to grow their audience that doesn't have one to 200, like very easy, quick hit, low-hanging fruit that you could have on an email list inside of a week or two. Yeah, so there, there you go, right there. There's your advice for first gens is go out and actively get people on your list and just start. And cool. if it's sixty percent good. That's good enough. Just get in the habit because you're starting to build something that's powerful that will become only more valuable with time. Hundred percent. Yeah, I love it. All right. Well, that's all the time we've got. Thank you so much, Jake, for doing this with me. If you want to get a hold of Jake, uh, here's his LinkedIn profile. Of course, you can also send him a DM right here inside the First Gen community. I'll include this link in the post down below as well. Um, and I'm going to encourage Jake, he doesn't know this yet, but I'm going to encourage him to follow this post in the community so that if you leave a comment, you have a question for him, he'll get notified about it and, uh, kind of have like a little AMA style thing if you want to. So, awesome. um, all right, buddy. Well, thanks so much. appreciate having you in the community and all the, all the cool things that you're doing to help people grow their business with email. Oh yeah, man. I'm excited. It's been awesome. Thank you. All right. See you, buddy.